your boy and jj stone aka black gritty it is tuesday night that means it is another episode of gritty nights um it is hitting weather today it is beautiful out it was it was beautiful outside made me feel like i just put some pads on and not do anything because i'm too old to be hitting somebody for real for real but it felt like hitting season it felt like october it felt like the leaves are coming down a little too soon for me but my ac bill was really happy today i hope you had a great 74 degree day if you're in the tri-state area um, Jason, did you enjoy the weather today? Oh yeah, man! First time the windows have been opened all summer, probably. Right? Yeah, you probably got some fresh air in <laughs> that know, beat. Yeah, you know I mean, stinking in there. And last time <laughs> I came through, them fur balls was tumbleweeding up in that <laughs> piece. You know what I mean, <laughs> put on the college, you know, college stuff. No, it got see? a little chilly out. Oh, you know, it's time oh, to get ready. Oh, criminal college stuff is what I see there. Harry, champion, you. Harry. <laughs> Was you was you out there with your shirt off running? Away? I was gonna say I got I got sleeves on today. You know what I'm saying? So I, was, <laughs> I mean, it was like 68 degrees in my apartment this morning. I had the window open. I was like, "What's going on?" I was I was cold, but uh, no, nah, it was beautiful once I realized the situation. So I say, um, but yeah, it, it, it was a nice day. I, I, you know, when it's hot, even in the summertime, when it's hot, so hot, and then the day cools off, you feel like something's wrong. Like yep. I got the car, my car wasn't hot. I'm like, why isn't the car hot? <laughs> I left a bottle of water in there. I'm like, yo, this is like, I can, I can drink this it's a right cool now. Cool right now. It's a little chill right not, now. <laughs> this, is, this is legit. Like you know what I mean? So, um, I I know it's early for some people, but some people already got the pumpkins out and everything going August first. So. I got the meme I mean, up right now. I saw the post. I forget who posted it, but they're like all the seasons, 14 seasons in Philly, and we're at that yeah, summer, swamp ass dues, fall, <laughs> false fall. It's second summer, and we're in false fall right now. So That's second summer fall. is coming. It'll be hot in September. So enjoy it for a little bit. Yeah. So um, but yeah, it was it was it was a nice chill day today. Um so we're watching the Phillies play the, the Braves, and uh it's now two to one. And uh, Azuna just hit a home run off a of Wheeler. And I was just complaining right before the two pitches before he hit a home run. I said, man, Wheeler's pitching a lot of stuff in the dirt. And Jason said, <laughs> it is Azuna. So yeah, then I didn't say that. Yeah, he did. No, I, I said it. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody said it. And I'm like, <laughs> it kills me because, so let's just start with the other night. Um, they could have swept the Nationals. Um, he sat Bryce Harper and JT. And the internet went ablaze and said, well, you need to put Bryce up there to pinch hit in the ninth inning or JT to pinch hit in the ninth inning. Jason, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, there's no reason not to put Bryce up there to pinch hit down two with a runner on first base. There's no reason not give your team a chance to hit one out of the park. It's not going to put too much stress on Harper to bring him out there to bat. I know he needed the full day off with a day off the next day, I suppose. But it's just one at bat. Harry? Yeah, I mean, Jason makes a good point. I think, like, we've been asking Topper to make, you know, these shifts and sit guys and this and that. But that's a situation where, like, sitting him for that amount of time and giving him the opportunity to kind of, like, build, be the spark, you know, at the end of the game is is something that can fire him up even more. I mean, so, yeah, I don't know what <laughs> – I mean, I think Topper's trying some things, but I don't know what he, – he knows what he's trying right now. So he, he sat Turner for one game, and that lit something under him, and it got Nick rolling again, and that's fine. So my thing was I didn't need him to put Bryce Harper in in the ninth inning. By that point, it's too little too late. You shouldn't have gave them both a day off anyway because they were going to have a day off. You should have said, I wanted them to have two days off because saying that you wanted them to have a, a day off when they were about to have a day off anyway is stupid, and you sound childish and dumb. So once you already sat them down, no, I don't want you to put Bryce in there, captains break his back and pulls everything, ain't been warmed up all game, been sitting yeah, on the bench yeah. clapping his hands. So no, not really put him in in the night. I know it's baseball and you can swing a bat, but at the same time, this dude's out there taking BP two hours for every game, hitting the same way. Uh, what's up, Diggs? The same way every game. Like, he's got a routine. And I don't know if he's going to go out there all, off the bench and just hit something. JT's still broken, so I'm not throwing him out there either. And on top of that, let's be honest, these boys ain't been hitting shit clutch anyway in games. You know what I mean? When we're, when we're winning lately on this little trash can uh, world tour, we get up on people 13-2, to two and it's a, it's a route. 
but we're not really when the games are tight we're losing a lot of those games so i don't even know if you, if you bring them both in an eighth and ninth inning or seventh eighth, ninth inning. i don't care i don't know that they're going to do anything for us i don't know if they're going to make a difference so i'm not mad at him not putting him in and people saying, well, Bryce should have took his bat and went up there. And then over the whole thing about Bryce not listening and taking control and being an asshole and uh, egregious and arrogant. So I'm just like, why'd you give him the day off in the first place, Topper? Yeah, I think optically just giving the game away and then when you have a chance yeah. to probably tie it later, you just start like, eh, we're probably not gonna. So what's the big deal anyway is where it looks so bad. Right. I know you know they're so far up with the lead in the division over the Braves, but the Dodgers and Brewers are right there for the top two seats. And if you don't get one of the top two seats, you basically didn't accomplish anything the whole season. Yeah, and you guys make good points too. I mean, like you said, Bryce, he's a violent swinger. JT's banged up, like just putting him in there in the ninth with the pressure to do something clutch. I mean, who knows? If he pulls his pulls his, you know, hip or something, like taking a violent swing, that would be a pain. So I don't I don't hate that they didn't put him in like you just said, but yeah, it just feels again, it feels like He's just trying stuff, you know, until something sticks versus having like a genuine strategy as to how to get us fired up. And and that's the thing. You use the word we, I talk about all the time. And I said it earlier, we're talking off air. I feel like he has no strategy. And last week, in the last two weeks, he finally did something. But it's like almost too little too late. Like, oh, man, his whole thing is I stick with my guys. Yeah. I stick with my guys. <clears throat> it costs us a World Series. It costs mm -hmm. us a chance of going to the World Series last year. Topper, now I know the guys go cold and things happen, but Topper's unwillingness to change or taking too long to change kills this team. And it killed us in this stretch where we were 300%. Like, it, it's just really bad. And he doesn't do anything. So when he finally does something, oh, what happens? You sit Turner. That woke Turner up. You you, you move uh, Castellanos up. Hey, that warmed Castellanos up. Wow. Imagine if you did that three weeks ago. Imagine if you tried anything three weeks ago, but you didn't. And now Dombrowski's chirping a little bit. Dombrowski had a little statement to the media where he's like, well, you know, we can't just sit back and expect things to change without doing anything or making any moves. I'm like, wow. That was Middleton. The oh, Middleton, excuse me. Yeah. Say, well, at least he's finally saying something too. Like, hey, something's got to happen because you can, you just know how Topper is. Yeah. And, and I appreciate, you know, not for nothing. If we're all going down to ship, you know, we're cool. I'm going I'm to stick with my guy. Right. But at the same time, bro, you're killing us right now. Yeah. You're, you're still on the team, but right now, just take a break. You know what I mean? Like, if, if you go into a store and, you know, my dad died that day, Jason and Harry are going to be like, yo, you go work in the back. You you should not be handling the, the yeah. register right now. <laughs> Today is not <laughs> you to be no. dealing with people. Like, help your team out. Like, move positions. Do something. And Topper just doesn't do it. And then when he does and it works, it's like, oh, well, was it the move or was it the fact that you find it against nobodies? Right. So I'm not I'm not worried, but I'm worried about what you said earlier. The Brewers. So you win a division, but you end up basically being a wild card team anyway. Yep. So but you get home field for your wild card. Yeah. After having such a huge lead. It's gonna kind of feel like a failure, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. And not only that. We don't have that much time to have the momentum. The last two years, right around now, it's it's almost kind of the same. Right around now is when the Phillies pick up, and then they would go into the postseason hot. Now, if that happens where, you know, last week they beat up on the Nationals and the Marlins, and uh, we have the Braves right now, which we're down 1-2. But if we come out beating these guys and get on a little roll, and roll into September with wins, I'll feel much better. Yeah. But right now, I don't have any confidence, right? Like, I don't feel like... No, I mean, but your point about, like, that, like, right, about the cans, we are talking about that off air, you know what I mean? Like, I don't mind that it's like, oh, we're beating these bad teams again, you know what I mean? Because baseball is about being hot, it's about confidence, especially hitting. I mean, you have to be confident. So I don't mind getting, like, BP against the Nationals, whatever you want to call it. I mean, we're going, you know, hit, hitting like crazy. Again, we have to sustain that into the playoffs, but I, I don't mind beating up on cans to get us ready for the better teams. I don't mind that. Uh, how do you feel about the, the usage of the bullpen, Jason? Oh, I never understand the way Topper uses the bullpen, man. It, you know, they worked out in the beginning of the year. They had a high-ranked bullpen. Uh, it seemed like every move he did was just golden. Strom was unhittable. Hoffman was unhittable. And now it seems like every time he puts those guys in a certain situation, they fail, including the new closer, Estevez. <sighs> Estevez is, it's it's killing me because again, 
I wanted a bat. Yeah. And and it doesn't matter what I want or what you want or what we want. We're nobody, right? We're right. three guys with a podcast that nobody listens to. Uh, <laughs> shout out to the 50 people that are listening yeah. right now that we love you. Yes, so we love you. We're not out there. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're not out there every day. But my, my point to that is, is like, but we can still see that the thing that they said they didn't want to have happen happened anyway. I don't want to mess with the clubhouse. Right. Well, bring Jazz in here, and and I'll take those home runs he's been hitting for the Yankees. Like, uh, clubhouse be damned at that point. Like, bringing in a new energy, a new lifeblood. Not like these mayonnaise and haze, and, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, dudes that I I don't know. Middle, I'm, Not for nothing. I, I'll say it because I don't care. Sometimes, like, some of these Caucasian dudes all look the same. Like, I'm like, like Mays, Hayes, Ways, they all look the same. Mayfield, Mayfield, B- Batterfield. And then their stats almost look identical to them. Like, we swapped the guy for this guy because we, we, uh, we, who do we send out? Mayfield? Um, Batterfield? Batterfield, yeah. Like, oh, him. Now he's got a triple today. He got a triple. <laughs> and I, I, and I, hate, I hate watching. Like, you know what I mean? When I bring yeah. over the chick, she gone. She out of my uh-huh. life. But when I'm looking at some of these other players, I'm like, oh, so, oh, so now, now you're hitting. Yeah, now you're like hitting, that. and I'm like, <laughs> is it? And again, then that's when I go back to, is it coaching? Is it strategy? Now I know that when you are a veteran in the game, you swing the way you swing. If that's the case, then why have a coach? If that's the case, then why have analytics? If that's the case, uh, so, all these things matter. And I feel like some people are going to other places and doing better, and then they come here and they're, they're going down. So, what you said about the closer, I'm like, man. This guy was top of the world when he came in here. We were excited. You look at the numbers, you're like, okay. He gets on the field, and I'm like, do you not like cheesesteaks? <laughs> like, what, what, what do you need shipped from home, bro? What, what do you like to eat? Soup? Chili? What is it? Let me know. I will ship it. I'll pay overnight because he doesn't feel, still seem comfortable. But at the same time, Topper's putting these guys in and leverage situations that feel like not the right button for the leverage, if that makes sense. Right. We, we try not to get too deep into the weeds with like all the numbers and everything like that in the show, but you can tell that he's not using the bullpen correctly and he pulls guys early, which he's always been problematic with, but it, it excuse me, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like he has a good feel for this team and what they need to be going forward right now. And, it, and it's, it's killing me. Right. Who do you yeah. trust in the bullpen in October right now? Do you trust Hoffman? He's their best guy, but do you trust him? I, and I, I don't know what just happened to Hoffman in the last like three weeks. Right. <laughs> Before they made the trade for the closer, Hoffman was my man. I'm like, yo, Hoffman's closer. Right. They bring the other dude in here, and now Hoffman seems like he can't get it. I'm like, wait, what happened? Like, why? Right. I always liked Alvarado, but he can't throw strikes this year. Yeah. He can't throw strikes. Now, if you're not going to throw strikes, you can't th- pitch when it matters. Yeah. He, he's he's lost something, and it, again. You can't like sit him down. You, what, what do you do? Right. <laughs> like, I mean, you gotta you gotta be a good you gotta be a good coach. I, I know that's very general to say that, but it's like I don't know if it's analytics stuff. I don't know what it is. But when I was growing up watching baseball, it's like there are guys making gut calls that felt like when they're bringing guys in or bringing guys out, and that means you know your team, you know the vibe, you know the mentality of your guys that day or that week or what the buildup has been to that game. Like all the nuances and intangible things about being a manager in baseball, feel like a lot of managers probably do less of that now because of analytics. But at the same time, you need to have that in your back pocket. And Topper can be a vibes guy all day and night. But if you can't be a vibes guy that's also like creating a vibe when a guy doesn't have a vibe or figuring out who does have the vibe in a, on a given day, like then you're not doing it all. You're not a great manager. You're a good manager. You're not a great manager. So I, I don't know what it is, um, but that's that's what you need to that's what you have had when you have great a great roster. You need to be like, you know what? What's the right combination of people on this day? You need to know your team well enough to make it happen. So that's what he's lacking, and I don't know if it's going to happen in the playoffs, right? Like, I, it hasn't shown it yet. I'm probably not counting on it. I, I you, Jason knows because I, I yelled about it all last year. <laughs> I can't stand Topper in the postseason. Yeah. Again, three weeks ago, I wanted him fired. And his birthday was last week. He beat up on tomato cans, and I look like an idiot. But again, I got <laughs> to say you should be fired, and then you'll you do something. You are not allowed to criticize him ever. Uh, ever. To everybody. Uh, He's got a fan club. It, my goodness. They, <laughs> man, they, be, they, they love Topper. And I, he ain't Charlie Manuel. You know what I'm saying? He ain't Charlie Manuel. He had a fan club, and he knew the vibes, Charlie Manuel. Yeah. He knew the vibes. So Yeah, again, and, t- and Topper basically got cemented yeah. as a Philly guy because he took over 
and a team turned around. Right. And he's the opposite of Girardi, like basically. Yeah, so it's like, okay, I get that. And and, and I do appreciate it. But at yeah. the same time, old dog, there's a reason why you were never a manager for the 9,000 years you were in the league. Bingo. And I'm seeing it. I'm seeing why you weren't that because you were the go between you were you were you were mom. When dad came in on a rampage and had a hard day at work, you were like, oh, baby, you know, he just had a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let That's me very good. Yeah. I mean, and then, and then dad be like, yeah, yeah, you know, I didn't mean to get on the key. Yeah, I talked to him already. So he knew. Like, <laughs> I was just middleman management, and he was great at that. He's good cop. Yeah, yeah all the yeah. time. Yeah. But guess what? <laughs> Mom and dad get divorced. Go live with your mother. <laughs> not, not, now she got sneaking out the window. You're probably pregnant at 14. <laughs> You've been at dad's house. Dad got the windows nailed shut. You ain't seen nobody for four weeks. Like, the, <laughs> when you go live with mom, you can get away with anything. You're like, yo, we have a Tostino for breakfast, mama. Uh, <laughs> like, whatever. I don't care. Just go out there and be quiet. So, I mean, and shout out to all the single moms out there. I'm just joking. Don't come at me. I apologize. <laughs> single dads ain't nothing either. I, I, I've made Tostitos for breakfast for my child. Anyway. <laughs> do are we sponsored anything. by Tostitos? We might be Tostitos, <laughs> yeah. the boys. Yeah, you know I mean, we out here. We'll crunch on something. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so it, it's just like Topper's just the nice guy, and he it shows so much under pressure. In this run where we're down, it's it shows he doesn't make any um, moves. He did get dark. <laughs> 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 That's why I said I apologize. So I was saying, oh, single ladies, oh, single ladies. Um, couldn't do without you. Uh, so, yeah, um, <laughs> Topper in the, under pr- pressure does what he does. I'm just gonna stick here. I'm just gonna stay. I'm just gonna stay. Now, nah, dude, we need you to shuffle. I brought yeah. up. I forget what game it was. I, I t- said it on air too. Um, there was a game where uh, someone was on third base, someone was on second base. Nick Castellanos gets up to bat. Now he hit two balls in that game. He had three ba- balls the night before, and they walked Nick because Nick was hot to get the stop. And I'm like laughing because I'm like, you walk Nick Castellanos like, <laughs> I know he done hit some balls the last couple of games, but come on, you most consistent hitter. Yeah, yeah, you're wa- <laughs> you're walking Nicky like that. You walking the- okay. And guess what? Got up there, got out of the inning with the third out. Everybody went home. And I was like, oh, strategy. Smart. You don't walk anybody. No. We're in the plus against Arizona. And this is this is this where I was just done with Topper. And that, we'll move on to something else. I, I hate bashing on Topper so much because people just love him so much. We're playing against Arizona. I forget what the guy's name is because I don't care because it makes me sick. He had 18 hits at like 20 at bats. And then they benched him for a game because of his attitude. He came back, hit, hit, hit. I'm thinking, yo, it's a tight game. Topper's got to walk this guy. Right. He's, <laughs> he's, he's hitting every at bat. Doesn't walk him. It's two run home run. And I'm like, okay, the guy's batting 1000% against you. Like literally <laughs> like <laughs> 100 he is on fire. Yeah. And the only thing that cooled him off was his own coach saying, yo, because I, I forget what happened because it was something like in the dugout or whatever, but his coach, even that's that's a manager. Oh, you ain't going to come in here and talk wild to me like that, bro, just because you're hitting the ball a little bit. You think you're big time? Yeah. Sit down. Right. Because there, there are a lot of young guys in that team. Right. He, he sat him down for a game. I'm like, I was like, is he injured? How'd you just sit this guy? And again, they were all trying to keep it under wraps about what happened or whatever, but he came back out there on fire. And did we walk him ever? No, not one time. Every at bat he went up there, he got a hit. And again, I don't want to respect him enough to say his name. So you could Google it if you want to, uh, but it's accurate. Man. I all the best to- managers do that. Like the guys that come to mind, like Ron Washington, Bruce Bochy, I mean, like Dusty Baker. I mean, these guys are like stoic when you see their faces and they're talking about their team. But when they're talking to their team or talking to the other team, they got some F bombs in there and they're making, they're firing guys up and they're saying, yo, you can't do this. And they're putting their foot down. So, like, Topper is not those guys, man. Aaron Judge comes up to bat. Right. I'm scared for my life. I'm scared for my life. One, yep. because he's nine feet tall. Yes. <laughs> Two, because he's hitting nukes on us. Mm-hmm. And three, I'm like, we're not even going to walk him right now. Like, again, they went up there. He, he, he I mean, he struck out. I mean, you, you had some good at bats with him. But late in the games, I'm like, yo, we are, we are, the game is too close to be pitching this guy the ball. Like, right. I, big yeah. drop off from Soto and, uh, you know, Judge to the rest, most of the guys in the Yankees lineup. Yeah. So, like, come on now. Yeah. Like, and, but, and, and that's what's crazy about that. 
Topper just went out there, and then, and that's when Jazz was and Jazz just got there. We yeah. played too, and New York got him for nothing, yeah. like for absolutely nothing. He's hurt now, though. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, he would have been hurt here. Yeah, yeah he would have definitely been hurt. <laughs> he would have been more hurt probably yeah. here. Here, so. he'd have never hit a home run. He would never hit <laughs> well, that. I agree with. <laughs> he came here to be like, hey, hey. So here's how we do things here. Yeah, we swing like crazy and try and pull everything. Go for it. <laughs> Right. Well, swing at balls. That's yeah. why. I, that's why I'm a Rojas guy because he can't pull everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, at least he's getting hits, and uh, it. It's funny because you say it and you can see it. When he get, he's had a couple home runs, right? <laughs> when he gets a home run, guaranteed his next four at bats are terrible. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's trying again. He's like, oh, that home run thing is cool, and I'm like, nah, nah, oh, bro, stay in your lane. Yeah. Stay in your lane. We need a double. We need it. We need a du- dude. You're a double machine. You're so fast. <laughs> He's like hitting in the air is way more fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes up there, and I'm like, "What are you swinging at? You look like Trey Turner." Oh my god. Trey Turner's a bust right now. Yeah, so far. Trey, that Trey Turner's a bust. Been... I I don't I don't care about the stand ovation anymore. No. Uh, I Too don't care. Errors. Oh well. Ugh. So um, dang, what's his name? Uh, he's on first take sometimes. Older white gentleman. Oh, Mad, Mad Dog. Dog. Mad Dog. Yeah. The Philadelphia fans are the real fan base. They yeah. booed their team. Hey, dog. How he's dare we? When, when, you, when you lose nine out of ten. Yeah. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> what are we supposed to do? You, you get home, you get booed here because we care. And because we know better. Yeah. Respectfully, we're not soccer moms. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. And, and shoot, but. soccer moms will boo you too. They just wait till you get in the car. I mean, yeah. you cry on the way home. That's that's what they do. Shout out to the single mom. That's what they do. They wait, they wait till you get in the car to boo you. So, I mean, saying things like that about Philadelphia because Philadelphia is a knowledgeable fan base. When when you go to an Eagles game, and again, when Nick Sirianni got his his coaching job, he was playing Madden when he was the offensive coordinator. It was pass, 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 pass. Oh yeah, run. Pass, 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 run. Game's over. I didn't throw the ball once. I didn't target once my tight end the whole game. Right. How's that possible? Because you're stuck on the X button, bro. You, <laughs> you're playing a video <laughs> game. You're stuck on the X button. You're like, oh, AJ Brown, X. AJ Brown, X. Oh, we got Devontae. Devontae, Devontae. Like, that's all you did up and down the field. And then you believe somehow on Quez Watkins. Then the next game, since you ran, since you passed the ball 90% of the time, run, 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 run. Tight end, run, 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 <laughs> tight end. And everybody's like, yo, bro, what, what is going on? You can't, your mind has to function in the way to play the game because he's so worried about how he's perceived, he gets caught up in the moment. That's why he can't call plays because he's an emotional machine. He's a, he can't can't control something. <sighs> the emotions take yeah. over and he freaks out. So when you got somebody like that, it's it's really just hard to, to get a grasp on what you're supposed to be doing. And with Topper... I'm like, you're you're the exact opposite, bro. You don't have enough emotion to say, hey, I gotta sit you down. We we gotta we gotta try something different. And again, I'm just worried about the postseason. And uh, I'm still gonna be screaming red October and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Right with Topper, it's okay to steer around the rocks, man. You don't gotta stay the course and go yeah. right through all the rocks. <laughs> like you just steer around every once in a while, change course. Yeah. He's like, well, well the analytics says bring in this lefty. It's like, dude, just, just yeah. what are the vibes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, now that I brought up Nick, let's uh, let's switch over to the birds. Yeah, uh, we don't have to worry about Nick's uh, PlayStation John Madden uh, call plays anymore. But uh, I hate hearing him speak. <laughs> hearing him speak is one of the worst things I think I've ever had to deal with as far as listening to a coach in my life. He's the worst coach to listen to of any coach. And I, I mean, there've been some terrible coaches. Actually, that's a lie. The, the one Jets coach that was on Coke all the time where his eyes were on the Oh, basketball. my God. Adam Gase. Adam yeah. Gase. Yeah, Adam Gase. So he's second to Adam Gase. And that's saying Chip something. sucked, too. Chip sucked, too. Let's be real. Uh, yeah. Well, at least Chip was an asshole, and I get yeah, it. Yeah, he yeah, was, yeah. Chip didn't seem stupid or aloof, and he could speak. He yeah, just Nick's spoke Griffin. in a way that, like, I am I am the Lord and Savior. Yeah. I am Jesus' cousin, and you're yeah. not. Like, <laughs> that's how Chip talks. So, yeah. uh, again, yeah, I, I feel what you're saying, but yeah, yeah. it's not the same as when Nick you're talks. Right, you're right. the boats, Chip Kelly. Yeah, burn the boats. <laughs> burn the boats. So uh, just hearing Nick talk drives me crazy. And it's even worse this year because last year he had two rookie coordinators, right? And so yeah. when they spoke, they sounded like, educated men 
but they didn't sound like they had gravitas. No. When I listen to Kelly and I listen to Vic, I feel like I just want to like just pull up and go like this and be like, <laughs> "Tell me about it again, Uncle Coach." Like, like, <laughs> like, tell me about it again, Pop Pop. Like, what what happened back in the day when you was coaching? All oh, you told them young punks to sit down, huh? Like, <laughs> like listening to both of the coordinators just sounds like what a coach should sound like. Oh yeah. Decisive, precise, on topic, on point, throwing a little colloquialism to make people feel good and relate to it, and keep it moving. Yeah. And then Nick is up there, yeah, and we're doing it, and we're getting it, and they're doing it, and they're going to get it. Yeah, I mean, because we want that, and we need that. Because I think that when I was in third grade, I talked <laughs> to a snail, and the snail told me, if you don't know a whale named snail, then you ain't going to hell. So I <laughs> no, that's what we got to do to perceive the proverbial furniture of what's going on. What'd yeah. you say, Coach? Huh? He has we not talking about football? Word economy yet? You know, no. be those phrases and get in and get out. <laughs> like, right? Answer the question with without saying anything. He, he starts the sentences like he's driving down the road, gets lost, and he just tries yeah. to get off the road somehow. Like that's how he finishes it. He just he just tries to end it. That's it. And I ramble sometimes, and I rant, so I know how it is when you when you get forced for the tree. You can be creative and poetic in your rants. You know what I'm saying? Nick is just like jibber jabber over there. Every time he does it, he gets lost. Yeah, right. every time. Yeah. There's not one. The, the only time he stuck the landing was the the flower and the plants and the water. Not, and he didn't even stick that landing. The teammates had to come in and, and clean it up for him. Like, yeah, we know what he's saying. <laughs> you know, yeah. Do you? Yeah, I mean, you, that, that's when you know they were sticking with coach. They was riding with coach. So. Again, he doesn't instill confidence in me, but man, Kelmore, Vic, I feel it. I mm -hmm. feel what they're talking. Um, watch the preseason games. Uh, Jason, did you watch the highlights or the low lights or the regular lights? I spent wasting some time watching the actual games. Okay. So um, it seems like the 10 and 1 team was out there in preseason. Uh, keep it close by some miracle grace of goodness win the game in the last three seconds of the game. Yeah. And uh, a win is a win. That's what we said all last year with 10 wins. A win is a win. But we found out that a win isn't a win, and sometimes you can <laughs> blow somebody out. Uh, but this is preseason, so that's different. Yeah. Um, I haven't talked to you about it at all. Harry, yeah. who is the second best quarterback on the Philadelphia Eagles? Can he pick it? Is he? I mean, from the from the low lights, I don't know. I mean, it looked like he was making the you know the, the reads uh, to dump dunk it and as he needed to and things like that. So I don't know. I'm taking Kenny Pickett. I think I think he's he's the second best. So I will tell you this: that is the one snippet that Nick said. My problem is I have a really good memory. Nick had a very nice snippet when he came out and instantly said because how he told him to. Kenny Pickett was uh, ten for ten mm -hmm. on the passes. I don't know, it was like 90%. And then Tanner McKay was, what was he, 14 for 17? I mean, again, high percentage completion. No, we're good. Ken, we're good with Kenny. Now, Jason, who's the second best quarterback on the Philadelphia Eagles? Probably A.J. Brown or Devontae. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's <laughs> definitely A.J. Brown. That's the right call. Jake Elliott's number three, and then, and then Kenny Pickett. Tanner McKee is better than Kenny Pickett, who – just refuses to throw a ball over 10 yards. Yeah, he just I mean, that's... refuses to do anything over 10 yards. It's amazing. That that in itself is the problem because I can't yeah. even like get on you, Harry, for what, what you just said because what you said is accurate. He's that's why the offense fine. Like that's how, that's how I was feeling. The internet's having an issue, right? Right. The internet's like, yo, Kenny went in there, went nine for 10. Mm -hmm. Kenny went in there and went 11 for 13. Like, yeah, for 27 what yards. What do you want to do? <laughs> yeah, and right, right. They got right. a field goal. I'm like, yeah, but he's. These are five yard checkdowns. These are uh, 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 out swinglets, six yards. Like he hasn't thrown a ball past 15 yards and had a completion. Right. Not one time. He should have had a long touchdown to uh, John Ross in that a 98 yarder, but he it went to the wrong shoulder. Yeah. And again, that that can happen to anybody. I'm not yeah. gonna like I'm not gonna rip him on that. But it, the the point is that they also don't have any attempts with him doing that, right. as opposed to. Well, Tanner's playing against the third team. Well, Tanner's playing against the second team sometimes, too. And Tanner's playing against the third team, but guess what? He's pushing the ball 30 and 40 yards down the field. And the balls that aren't being connected with is because the wide receivers aren't catching them. It's not because he ain't putting dimes on people. Right. He's throwing balls on ropes 30, 40 yards down the field. And I'm like, again, like I said, like I can't even argue or say, like, oh, Harry, you're crazy. 
Because like I said, when you look at it, you're like, huh, Kenny Pickett's moved. Okay. But then when you see Tanner, I'm yeah. like, okay. <laughs> he at least he's taking shots. Right, right. And again, that might be more of an excitement thing for me. But yeah. and I'm also just I just like Tanner McKee from last year. But uh you are right because the Eagles, Harry Roseman himself, uh has said that Pickett is the backup quarterback. Well, during the preseason game, they sent Dave Spadaro into the booth so he could talk about how great Kenny Pickett has been doing in practice and how the Eagles are so impressed with Kenny. It was the funniest thing ever. Because you knew exactly why it happened. Like, all of a sudden, like, why is Dave Spadaro joining the booth and just hyping up Kenny Pickett? And, and you like, know why, right? Yeah, propaganda. Well, Because <laughs> they the, traded the for trade him. Trade him? Yeah, well. Not, not even because they traded for him. So I was arguing with somebody who was telling me, I'm glad that uh, Howie Roseman doesn't listen to Twitter advice for what he does with players. I'm like, you know what he actually does? Yeah. Because the fact that they sent him in the boot to have that conversation, if you looked at Twitter in the yeah. hour before then, all it was was <laughs> Tanner time, Tanner yeah. time, Tanner yeah. time. Tanner McKee is better than Pickett. Like, the internet lit up. And I know for a fact that Harry Roseman and his team they see and their PR team are just sitting there watching like, yo, we've got to curb this right now. Because most of you sitting at home are watching on TV. So we need to get a voice in their ear to say, hey, you know, look at the 10 for 10, look at the 9 for 10, you know, focus on that because that's what Howie wants for two reasons. Maybe a quarterback gets hurt and you want to flip, yeah. pick, you know, because we the Eagles are known to do that. You know, we're a quarterback factory. Two, so <laughs> he, he traded for the guy and you're like, oh, well, uh, I don't want to look bad, right? Howie, right. you don't want to look bad like you made a mistake. Right. But you did because Tanner, Tanner McKee is better. He's just better. Matter of fact, at this point, Tanner McKee looks better than Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this is the thing about nuance in football. So I don't know if you guys got to see any of the, the Steelers game, their last game they had. Yeah. Um, both of the quarterbacks looked really bad. Yeah. And they both uh, played the whole game. They scored three points. Yes. Russell played the first half and um, Fields played the second half. Russell couldn't get anything going. Fields got a little bit going, but he also missed a wide open guy in the end zone. Almost got his back broken because he's dude trying his hardest. You can tell he wanted a spot on a team. He's jumping out the window. But the real problem they have is the right guard that they drafted in the first round last year is a turnstile. And their left guard seemed yeah. to be a turnstile. Roderick they, Jones is the guy you're talking about. Yeah. And they thought they upgraded. So while you're all, uh, everybody's, oh, uh, Russell Wilson's cook. See, we told you, Justin Fields, you should have he, he, he made the right decision not going for Justin Fields. I'm like, well, Justin Fields looked better because he has more escapability. Right, right. The line is crashing around him. The prime yeah. Russ, maybe, he can make it work, but not. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Like, it's not the quarterback. If you gave Russ a clean pocket, Russ is making that touchdown yeah. pass all day. I mean, but the Steelers' problem is their offensive line. And the reason I bring that up is because, we haven't seen our first team offense play football together. Right. They are loaded for bear at all the skill position spots. Kelsey's gone. The interior line is uh, who's in there, not in there, who's dinged up, who's not dinged up. Right. That's what scares me. That's the question mark, right? Like who how is that going to change from last year, especially with Jason, man? Like that's a that's just, you know, I mean, he's the quick, first of all, like one of the quickest uh, guards, you know, I mean, uh, centers, probably the quickest center in history. It's like that changes your whole dynamic, what you can do in general. So I don't know, man. You got to see it. I, I I just feel like the Kelsey thing, like I, I love Kelsey, not going with all that stuff, but I'm glad he moved on because the line was getting older mm -hmm. and we've got guys that are drafted to take his spot. And right. not getting to play. So if Kelsey knows anything about his position, which I we all assume he does, then he picked the right guy to be his replacement. Yeah. And the guy got to learn under him. So Definitely. I'm not even that much worried about the center. I'm worried about the left guard. Well, I just mean like as it relates to those positions, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, what they're yeah. used to with Jason, like that's a whole different thing. So yeah, yeah. but it, no, you're right, you're right. Well, and, and that but that's my point too. When you have a new right guard, left guard too, mm. it's like now Kelsey's not there to to teach those guys right. and and have them so it's a, it's a whole new line mm -hmm. and that's the issue so we can have saquon and we used to be a team that was built off the offensive line we're a trenches team Absolutely. you know McNabb made his living with stinkston and trash 
and a running game. Yeah. You know what I mean? The defensive line was just hawking people, which got us turnovers. Now it's like, who's on offensive line? We got Wayne, <laughs> My lot of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I believe in three. Then there's a window of two. And then the one is injured, so that one is rotating, which is a problem for consistency and continuity. Then on the defensive side, uh, Harry, who, who, what's Jordan Davis going to do for us this year? Hopefully stay time. healthy. I mean, hopefully stay healthy. That's the main thing. But, I mean, listen, I believe in him. He's a freak athlete. Like, that stuff translates. His attitude's good. Like, I don't, I don't believe that he's just going to, you know, fall off a cliff and just never, never get better. I think he's going to continue to get a little bit better every year. And like you said, last year, I mean – the, that run that he, you know, dove and landed on his body and that kind of ended, you know, ended maybe the trajectory he was on for last year. Like, I think he's, I think that's he's going to have point. a good year. I think he's going to have a good year. Jason, how do you feel about the defensive line? How, uh, how do the trenches look? The whole line? Yeah. The whole line's different than Jordan Davis. <laughs> like, man, I was ready for the Jordan Davis question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you you nah, start with Jordan Davis. The line, they have a lot of fastballs that Jim Johnson yeah. saw. A lot of guys they can send rushing the passer. Now, are they all good? We'll find out, right? Like, I'm still waiting for Nolan Smith mm -hmm. to shine. He's got three sacks in the preseason, but everyone is like a fluke weird sack where, like, he ended up getting the sack accidentally. It wasn't really like he just killed the guy off the line. Uh, Bryce Huff looks good when he's not going against Lane Johnson, but that's most everybody in the league doesn't look good going against Lane Johnson, so yeah. that's really not a bad thing, right? And, uh, you know, Jalen Carter, he's going to be one of the best defensive linemen in the league. We know that. Yeah. Now, we need Jordan Davis to step up and become – some type of force in the middle there because he's yet to establish that consistently. Yeah. There'll be times where teams can't run against the Eagles, then other times where they just run right by him and he gets washed out pretty easy by double teams. And it's pretty weird to see with how big and strong he really is. Well, we've got 92 linebackers yeah. now. So there's got to be one in there that's useful, right? I hope so. Because Nicobe Dean is talking his preseason talk again. That's right. He works. <laughs> I wasn't bad last year. I was just injured. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, in football, that makes you bad, basically. Yeah, so. like, <laughs> it, it, it really does. And, and I hate to say that, too, because yeah, you know, you're sitting home yeah. on the couch. But, dude, it, it, uh, the best, avail best ability is availability, and you're never available, it seems. Also, he wasn't bad, but was he good? But was he good? When he played? Like, I don't remember, you know, yeah. him making any real plays when he was out there. Yeah, as as I said out loud, I'm I'm a little stressed out, even though I, I have full confidence in this team. We're, we're, we're I'm talk, very stressed this week. Yeah. We're, we're gonna talk about it next week. We'll, we'll we'll pick the games. We'll talk about division winners. We'll do all the things that we're supposed to be doing. But um, I just I don't know. I don't want them playing in the preseason. To be honest with you. Yeah, me either. Ever. Yeah, no, no, no. That whole debate, that whole conversation, is good for like clicks and views and stuff like that. So people get mad. On back in my day, we used to. You didn't do nothing, right? When, did you play in the NFL? <laughs> Doing three days, you know what I mean? Where dudes were passing out, you know what I mean? Like, oh my god! Guess what? I, I'm a I'm a millionaire. Like, not, not to talk about basketball or whatever, but like, so we um, we're gonna talk Sixers. The guy we picked up from uh, um, France, yeah, uh, Benier Wallace. Yes, Benier. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah Benier I, call, Wallace. I call him Benier Wallace. That's a good one. That's very good. Um, yeah, I think I'm first created on that. Uh, <laughs> my credit that they put it on the internet. Yeah, you know. yeah. Um, so you know, he went and 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 dunked over LeBron. And LeBron took the charge, and it, you know, oh, you got he post rise LeBron. I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I'm like, first of all, they didn't call it a charge, by the way. First of all, no, it wasn't a charge, <laughs> but it was a charge. But they didn't call it a charge. But either way, he, he flopped too early for it to be a charge. <laughs> either way, my yeah, basic point. point is that a billionaire stood in front of a train and didn't try to get the block. He was like, you know what? I'm just going out here and trying to take this charge. I'm a billionaire and I'm yeah. letting another six foot nine dude run full speed at me. Right. Like your mind has to be completely different. So when you're sitting there saying like, these guys need to play, you know, back in the day when Earl was making $37,000 and that was the only way he was going to feed his family. Right. Right. I literally. Want to put a brick wall for that job. He's like, where else can I do this? Oh, by the way, Earl was also grocery bag bag in right. the store on the week on the weekdays. <laughs> At the same time, killing himself for that check. Now these dudes are making hundreds of millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars, and you want them to just go out there and bash themselves against the wall for fun? Right. Like yeah, not right. guys <laughs> they, they laughed at the one guy who, who wore out of the um 
the cat. He's the, probably like feeling I'm safe as hell. That's right. Yeah. He's feeling. Yeah, the Jonathan Taylor. I was on the Steelers. Colts and the Steelers guy award. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, and I'm like, yo, dude, if CTE is real, right? Yeah, it's a preseason bro. game. If he wants to wear this, it should, it should be mandatory. Like you're here trying to clown him. Oh, he's soft. Oh, he's this. And I'm like, bro, you're sitting on your couch. Mm-hmm. Half of you've never even played football. Put on a helmet. Yeah. You've never been hit. I, I want you to go out there and let somebody tackle you into a, a padded mat and see how you get up the next day, how you feel. But you want to come out here and clown people? Like, I'm like, it, 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 it annoys me because I'm like. I was like, oh, I was like, you think LeBron cares? He goes about nothing. Like, I'm a billionaire, and I still stood up there and I took it. Yeah. I'm a millionaire, and I'm out here. Rent- I'm going to a car crash, what, sixty times a day, a game? Like, right. come on, dude. Like, and being a millionaire, but it's also like the, the your future earnings, you know, especially yeah. in football. It's like you're you're not there on preseason and just like potentially end your entire career. Like, I mean, it's 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 ridiculous. And it's also cumulative. Yes. What, what's, the, what's the number one thing you say about running backs, and quarterbacks? Oh, wear well, and tear. The QB, because they, they, they bring up that stat. So you got the sacks, you got QB rushes, and you got QB hits. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, man, he's had 200 hits on this year. He only been sacked 10 times, but he keeps getting hit because he's doing from the ball league. He's Joe standing Burrow. In the hit. Joe Burrow. Yep. And those accumulated hits turn into injuries. Mm-hmm. So why stick him out there in preseason to get accumulation on the hits early? Even yep. if it's only three. Well, it's sloppier, too. It's always sloppier in preseason, too. Like, that's that's risky. And not only that, my biggest thing about it is, is that that one the one preseason game where Jalen was playing and the guy hit him out of bounds yep. and everybody goes rah, 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 starting to fight. I'm like, guess what? There's a punk kid on that team who's trying to survive and make a roster. And all he sees is a green light to make a hit and a highlight. Coach is going to see me hit this guy and one of two things is going to happen. It's going to be a, a flag 15 yards and I'm screwed or they're gonna be like, oh, look at the hustle on that kid. He doesn't give up. Look at his motor. Right. Because he took out Jalen Hurts. So no, I don't want to stick my three hundred million dollar quarterback out there for these young Thundercats to go tee off on when they get a free shot. No, thank you. No need. Nope. We got the whole year for that. There's gonna be enough of that, especially a guy who played through injury all last year because he didn't want to give up any games, which hurt us in in some fashion too. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he. He obviously was hurt last year because he's running like the wind again. He's running right. like right. he was in like the first six weeks of the season last year. Like, right. oh, I, so he did tweak something. I don't know how you get a brown that from the reports every week. That's not about the injury reports. They'd be lying. Yeah, the NFL is <laughs> sketchy with that. They all, you know, yeah. I don't even know how they like let Belichick put Brady on it with like miscellaneous shit every single week his entire career just to mess with people. Like, I don't even know. It's unserious. It's unserious. Yeah, it, it, it definitely doesn't have any uh, uh, checks and balances to it. So... Yeah, I'm just – we got one more preseason game. It's going to be the trash painted game where, again, uh, cut days the next day and you got to figure out who's on the team right? and all that kind of stuff. So, what do you guys think about Shipley? I think he, <laughs> he, had, Shipley? A, he had a couple of plays. He looked pretty good. I think catching the ball in the backfield. I, I like Shipley. Shipley looks good to me. He's, yeah. he's held on to the ball too. Yes. Apparently the knock on him is ball security. He looks uh, stockier than I thought he was. I don't know. So – I said that to Jason when he said something. He's like, he's like, does Jalen Hurst look more blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, well, Jalen usually has all those pads on. Yeah. So oh, I yeah, yeah, I, good point. Because <laughs> I, I, I thought the same thing. I went and looked yeah. at college. He's wearing a different set of pads. Yeah, like, yeah. Jalen's out there now because he's not in a game. He doesn't have one that 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 Kevlar waist right. thing. The flak jacket. Oh, the yeah, flag, yeah. It makes him look, it makes him look <clears throat> bulky. So when he doesn't like have Batman. that on, like, dang, he's all cutting. You know I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm always wearing a flak jacket. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, like, yeah, he looks a lot. I think it's because he's not wearing his full armament. But yeah. Shipley is that opposite. Shipley's like, yo, give me all the padding, bro. <laughs> yeah. like his, it almost looks like he's got a neck roll on. Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, actually, a linebacker catching that Sean Bradley out there. I was yeah, like, this is good. Yo, for real. Yeah, like, I, was like, I was like, is that a neck, is that a neck roll? Is that new pads? Because his pads look high in the back. So yeah. I, I yeah. do know exactly what you're talking about. He, look, he, look, <laughs> he looks bigger. Looks protected also, in the yeah. – yeah, yeah, which also makes him look faster because I'm like, I yeah. don't looking that big. Um, so yeah, he, he looks good. Also, the uh, the one rookie lineman they have wears the neck roll. That's the first time the Eagles have had a lineman with a neck roll in so long. This the last one had a neck roll. Runyon, oh, I guess Runyon comes to he mind for sure. He had it, did he? Did he? Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Did it's you see those like, spikes wearing neck roll? I'm, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <That was laughs> it, it's a long time ago, regardless. Uh, I know I agree it's wore a neck roll. Yeah. Get my neck roll. <laughs> um, <laughs> they need to bring the neck roll back. That's what they need to do. Uh, it, pro- it probably wasn't good for you. They found out or something. Did they don't like they do it. Uh, I don't know. Van Der Esch used to wear it on the down the Cowboys before he retired. Oh, Van Der Esch. He used true. to always wear it. That's true. He but he was a monster. I think if you're a linebacker that's diving like that, you gotta, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, Shippen looks good. Um, the Ringo looks good. They're probably gonna have Rodgers there. Bradbury looks so bad. Mm. Yeah, he's he's done. He's yeah, washed. that's what happens, man. You all of a sudden you just hit the age and it's just over. And and, and he Back went downhill quick. after one year. Yeah, that's how it happens. Though. Yeah, you just you're just old. D-backs, man. Yeah. Margins yep. with D-backs, man. Yeah. And again, like I like I was saying earlier, like okay, so you're you're 29, you're 30, yeah, you hit 31. You're like, man, I got hit really hard last year. Yeah, I, dude. I, I'm I don't like I don't like getting hit like that. Yeah, <laughs> it took Next me one, it took me two full extra days to recover. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That what that's what um Kelsey was talking about. Kelsey's like, yeah, when 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 it came in and I was like our day off and I still I wouldn't feel right till like Wednesday or Thursday. That's when you know. That's when you know. Yeah. yeah. When, you, when you get the itch and you're like, I, I don't want to even be in training camp anymore. Let me show up for games, which uh, just to go around the horn a little bit, the 49ers are screwed. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, Trent Williams hasn't been in. And they they made, made um, what's the guy's name? Quarterback? Purdy. Purdy. Purdy out and play with no Debo, with no IU, <laughs> no Trent Williams. And he was running for his life. Oh, he looks so mediocre. No McCaffrey. Yeah. They're like, yeah, you're going to want $300 million too. Let's go see you play without all the other guys we'll be able to afford when we give you that $300 million. So when we come to the table, we're going to be like, you see that in preseason, how you looked? We're going to give you a Daniel Jones deal, and you're going to take it because you've been living off of $900,000 a, a year. Yeah. Is Trent still Trent still holding out, right? Trent Williams. Yeah. And but that's my point. That's Trent, not good for that him either, though. I feel like as an O lineman, he can't just be coming in like late like that. When he comes back in, now he is he's a all world, all yeah. pro. He yeah. is a beast. He is um he's all he's, time. he's a version of bodyguard. He's um oh yeah, Jason Peters he's, 2.0. He's Jason Peters 2.0. Yeah, he is just a wonderment. Beating oh. people up. <laughs> Beating people up. But Sitting out this whole time and not getting any reps in, getting older, like yeah, I would, I would go at him. I would double team him. I would try to break him. Yeah, he hasn't had any training camp, no off season. And I'm sure he's lifting and working out and all kind of stuff. I don't care. I, I mean, would try, I would try to attack him. Yeah, to wear him out, especially if I'm a divisional rival. Oh, I'm the first. Get me in the first four weeks. I'm going after him. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I'll go against the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> fair <laughs> enough. Fair I'm enough. Double team. I ain't going alone. Like, I'm yeah, true, true. I got a squad with me. <laughs> Jason, you're coming with you. Can't leave me alone. I uh, said, we got to no. all go. We started the show talking about we was going to sit together. Yeah, look yeah. Out. Yeah, 48 minutes. You done turned on me. You started saying going, going at Trent Williams, though. So. But that's, why, that's why we got to take No, yeah, exactly. Yes, 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 yes. Anyway. His Achilles. He's ain't ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, for real. This knuckle sandwich. So I think he's going to get a lot of pressure. They better hope he stays healthy because he gets dinged up a lot too. Yeah. When he's not in there, that's when they went on that three-game losing streak. He he is their MVP. He is their best yeah. player. He is yeah. the protector. And, and he started out the, the Super Bowl with a couple not great plays, I feel like. And so it's like when he's not even on point, it's like it's noticeable with them. And he needs to always be on point. So Yeah, so – um and Ayuk, what's is he? Did he what's his deal? He he resigned. Did I miss that? Like I don't even. No, he didn't resign yet. He wanted to get quote unquote <laughs> traded, but he doesn't want to get traded. He wants yeah. to stay there. He just wants more mm-hmm. money. Yeah. So he's threatening it because he wants the he wants a million dollars more than Peters. Yeah, uh, Jefferson. Yeah, uh, which is crazy to even ask for, by the way. Yeah, I mean, how, how's that crazy? He's not better than Jefferson. Like <laughs> Jason, you're not even the other team. Jason, how is he not? Debo's the more important player on that team than Ayuk. I don't McCaffrey. believe McCaffrey. So. You're crazy. I don't. Like, McCaffrey's like, running back. McCa- yeah, that's out. can catch it. Yeah, but, no, but that's right. out. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Running backs don't get paid like that, so it's not even a conversation. But uh, Debo is hurt all the time. He misses like four games. Okay. Ayuk misses one game in his whole career. One. Mm-hmm. He's there all the time. We talk about availability, best ability. Ayuk is the only one that can run a route. Debo is a screen machine and yeah. run through people and make people miss and bounce out. The only guy running routes and getting deep balls thrown to him mm-hmm. is Ayuk and Kittle. 
watch. They make Kittle block like so oh. much, though. Kittle's always blocking. I, I, that offense shuts down when Debo's not there to be the weapon. See, I can't even compare that because when Debo was out, Williams was out when they went through that losing streak. So I don't know if it was mm-hmm. Williams or Debo, but it, it, he didn't have time to throw the ball. De- Debo, I feel like McCaffrey could do what Debo does. I agree. But Debo can't do what Ayuk does. Mm-hmm. Ayuk can't get down the field. He can't do what Kittle does. He can't get open down the field. He can't get uh, that. That's the difference to me. One's a wide receiver. One is a a, a gadget bully guy. Right. Who, that, that's why I didn't want to pay uh, Debo like that because, like, bro, you're not even really a receiver, really. You're more <laughs> like a scat backity back thing. Yeah, yeah. You want a wide receiver money? So uh, again, I'm Ayuk's better than him, numbers wise, stat wise, as a wide receiver wise to me. I, I hear what you're saying. I used to watch that Pittsburgh preseason game. Was like, I'm gonna go talk to the Niners, see if they want to. Ah, uh, shit! Oh my <laughs> yeah, god! Any guys? My bad about yeah. that. I mean, go, go just, while I'm talking, just go pull up pull up his stats last year if you can pull him over his Debo. I I just want to know. But anyway, my point to that is that he wants that money because he he knows that once uh, Purdy gets paid, he's not getting another contract. Nobody's gonna have any money left over, and Trent Williams wants his money for the same exact reason. So the 49ers can't contain and, and keep what they have which is boohoo for you then the cowboys now they're gonna pay cd lamb i know he's gonna pay cd lamb yeah cd lamb deserves uh the money oh that was the other thing i was gonna say you said he's not better than jefferson mm-hmm. is the principal's promise better than jalen hurts no but quarterback is it's a way too, different position again it, it is a different position, so but that it's, doesn't, it's it, not a comparison. I feel like but, every position does reset, though. I mean, it's not, right. it's, uh, you know, whoever's the next guy. Because if you right. look at, if you look at the wide receivers, the top pay wide receiver isn't always the best wide receiver. It's the one that got paid last because it goes, it yeah. goes Jefferson, um, Tyreek. I, nope, I'm in Ross. Someone's ever, what? He's damn. Yeah, because he just signed this offseason. Well, yeah, I mean, and shoot. then it goes, I, I forget who's third, but then it's, Waddle, then it's Hill. No, Hill, then Waddle, because Hill just resigned and re upped his right. deal. So, and then it's AJ Brown, and then it's Chase, and then way down, it's like Devontae Smith. So, Devontae's like at 26 million. Those other guys that cap out at 33 million. Yeah. So it's a little close in that, that, that range of what they are. And even with the Cowboys, they're like, oh, well, we want to give you the 26 million that Smith got. And See, then was like, well, I'm not Smith. Smith seems like the number two wide receiver to AJ Brown. I want the number one receiver money. I'm the yeah. only receiver money. Like, I want the 33 million too. And that's the problem because when you wait, so if he goes after, he's going to go after Jefferson. Jefferson got 33 million. He's going, oh, I, I want 33.3, 33.5. Like how Jalen Hurst was the highest paid by point two yeah. fifty thousand dollars, whatever it was. It's not the same as, as quarterback, but I think it might be the second most important paid position yearly other than maybe what, left tackle, I mean, right? It's, be, it's become that for sure. It's like, you know, the, the way those right. guys are getting paid. Money on the team, Jason, do you think? like Left tackles make more, DNs, corners. Yeah, so the, the, those positions. C- corners still? I don't, 30 mil? Of course I'm making 30 mil. I don't know about that. Yeah. Not the rate the receivers are anyway. There's definitely more receivers making. Yeah, 30 I, mil. I feel like the last corner that made that kind of money, Ramsey, right? Ramsey, because Ramsey got thirty million because he had a sixty million dollar two year deal. Um, but again, he's Ramsey. He stands out. Yeah, he stands <laughs> yeah. out. And there's not that many of those. Like um, Saint uh, Saint Patrick, <laughs> not Saint Patrick. Uh, Sertain. Patrick Sertain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, I was like, okay, where are you? I was like, I don't know where you go with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get yeah, it. it. Made Patrick, sense. I mean, he's gonna be the next uh, cornerback that's gonna get paid because he's yeah. he's about to be his own little Rebus Island out there. He is he is a nice. beast. Um, so yeah, the cornerbacks do get paid like that, but it's far and few between to get that money. Like Revis was holding the Jets hostage forever. <laughs> he was he paid 28, 30 million dollars every year because he's doing one of your deals. Um, but I think wide receiver is like the next skill position after quarterback that gets paid that kind of money because left tackle right tackle um and the end are, are probably the highest yeah but um yeah they, i don't know he thinks he deserves that money jason what, what's that number did you find it just now so he had 105 targets 75 catches seven touchdowns how many yards 1300 yards debo debo had 89 targets 60 catches uh, 892 yards, seven touchdowns. 
five rushing touchdowns. So better. <clears throat> no, you just said Debo was hurt for three games. True. Like, <laughs> but I mean, like, the way you described it, like, you has more yards per reception, like more targets. I mean, the three games thing matters for sure, but he's definitely yeah. more of like a traditional yeah, receiver. Catches, that's what I mean, because he gets those short catches and he, burnt, he turns he up the stink, yards. That's for sure, but just – No, yeah. no, no, he doesn't. No, I'm just, but I, that's right. what I'm saying. Like, for their team, for those numbers, a 1,300-yard wide receiver is a number one receiver on your team. Yeah. Right. And deep and Debo, I just feel like he's the gadget guy. Like, what, what, what's the yards per catch? On the thing, seventeen point nine and fourteen point nine. That's not as big as I thought it would. Be. <laughs> Shut up. More deep catches though. What's 20. the yak? What's the yak? Or yeah, what's the uh... twenty plus yard catches? Forty two for Ayuk, thirty for Samuel. So they're all, they're pretty yeah. even. I'm even the weapons the one you got to worry about. No, uh, they, they got to worry about both of them because he, he, yeah. he wants that money. But again, that's not our problem. That's a good problem no, to have. Right. Absolutely. Um, fuck the 49ers. Uh, bow, bow, bow. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of them are better than the Eagles receiver. Fuck the 49ers. Yeah, fuck the 49ers. Yeah, fuck the 49ers. Yeah, fuck the 49ers. Y'all a sorry ass team. Facts. Fuck the 49ers. Damn, I hate the 49ers. I hate y'all. I hate the 49ers. Fuck y'all. Bow, 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 bow. Y'all some booty jams. Hey, 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 hey. Y'all lost to the champs. Bow, 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 bow. Y'all some booty cheeks. Some booty cheeks. <laughs> you gotta have it queued up. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, I keep it on deck, boy. Yeah, I keep it on deck. It ain't never going nowhere. Oh uh, my god. You know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then um, the the Cowboys, Dak Prescott got them by the balls. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, he's got a no trade. <laughs> he's got a no tag. He's got a no do nothing. I'm gonna go out here this year, and I'm gonna throw around forty touchdowns because it doesn't matter because somebody's gonna pay me sixty million dollars, and it doesn't have to be the Dallas Cowboys. If I was him, I would leave Dallas high and dry. Yep, I'll go He's going to leave. He's going to leave. Yes. Oh, the Raiders? Oh, that'd be yeah. scary. Oh, my God. That'd yeah. be scary if you went to the Raiders because the Raiders need a quarterback badly. That's the yeah. right team. Oh, that is the right team to go to. Oh, my gosh. I didn't want to hear that. That makes me sick. <laughs> um, and so let me just put this out there because I like being Negro Damas. They're going to go out and uh, just either one or two things are going to happen. They're going to go out and let that go. Then they're going to trade the whole world, whatever they need to do to get Dion's kid. And then what? they're going to bring Dion. That's a move. Oh my God. I mean, that's a move. I make a lot they, of money off of that. They're not going to win nothing. And, 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 if, and if Dion's son doesn't uh, come out this year, then they're going to tank next year. Just to get the higher draft pick to draft him the year after, <laughs> dude. I could imagine like not like not not I'm not, I'm not saying that Dion's Antonio Brown, but I could imagine like Dion getting to a point with Jerry Jones where he just like doesn't show up to games like halfway through <laughs> the year, like like yeah, he's like fuck this shit, like I don't, I don't care. Like I could just totally see the way they handle shit in Colorado State, bro. Like so, he's not fucking with Jerry Jones, no way. So, uh, one hundred percent, he is fuck with Jerry Jones. Well, I mean, yeah, Cowboys for, history for yeah, two yeah, reasons: right. Cowboys history That's and three, part. like when. When Jerry loves you, yeah, he's he's an insane person, so he can do what he wants to. I forgot about like, the connection. When he treats Michael Irving versus the way he treats Des Bryant, you know which one he loved. You know which one he wraps his arm around. Aikman, I don't really care about Aikman. Aikman ain't doing bumps with me in the club, okay? <laughs> uh, Emmett Smith, he ain't bring no strippers to my birthday party. Irvin did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Irvin, okay? You see how he's Irvin. Now, yeah. I mean, Irvin Sanders didn't turn his life to the Lord, but back in the day, prime time was prime time. Oh, yes. No, that Jerry Jones would have hung out a few times with the prime time because he loves him some prime. And with prime the World Series. Some Jerry Jones. Yeah. What, did, what, did, what did prime say? My son can only play quarterback for three teams in the NFL the Philadelphia Eagles, the San Francisco 49ers. And the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I'm not saying they can do whatever they want to do, but the Manners did it. My brother ain't playing for no Chargers. So, and 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 Jerry went. What it? What's the worst trade? Not worst trade. The biggest trade in NFL history. Was did it, Jerry Jones do yeah, it? Yeah, he did. He traded, he traded for a running back. Why am I drawing a blank right now? Herschel running back. Walker. Herschel Walker. Yep. He traded him away. Yeah. Right. 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 You know and they got they got nice. They got they got a lot of pieces. <laughs> hey. He he's yeah. used to making deals for making deals. Yeah. So he. It, yeah, but Shadur, like I don't know. I'm not worried about Shadur, bro. Uh, oh, I'm not 
worried about Shador. Yeah, I'm just yeah. talking about the future. I, the future. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could care less where he goes. Because you know why? The Dallas Cowboys are a – we talked about this off on too. The Dallas Cowboys are a marketing firm. They're That's not right. a winning football team. They are a marketing firm. The star, the shine, the name. You bring Shador – you should door go sell some jerseys. Yes, you are. <laughs> You're going to have people out there. This year, they had attendance for um, their training camp. It was down 57%. The, st- the stands were empty. Nobody's going to come to training camp this year. That's kind of crazy. You, you put your door in there, knowing that Primetime's showing up. Even if Primetime don't coach, knowing that Prime's going to be there checking out his son. Oh, look. Yeah. Back the bus up with yeah. Trump money. Back the bus up. I hope that so, happens. Huh? I hope that happens. Yeah, that'd be I, fun. I, I believe yeah, it, would, it would be terrible. I believe that it's gonna happen. I, okay. I, I, I don't even know. The same thing we talked about, like uh, the Bronny James thing you heard in the second round. Oh, don't, don't take him. He'll go to China. Don't take him. We'll go to China. Like yo. Oh don't yeah, yeah. Him, bro, he so next FL. We, we, we're, we're not playing for you. Oh, that guarantee money goes away in the NFL though. That's a bold move to it, let people not draft you. Do you know what the difference is? Shador made $18 million. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's rich. He's already rich. What do you think? Bronny needed it? Definitely, Bronny definitely didn't need it. <laughs> he needed seven mil or whatever you got. There's no difference. So the, the difference is two things. Well, Shador is the, probably better the, than Bronny. <laughs> well, the, 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 well, the yeah, Shador is definitely better than Bronny. The real difference with that is that Bronny doesn't care. His dad cares. Right. When 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 his dad said, I'm going to play so I can play with my son, and everybody laughed. And the next thing you know, his son's averagely good, and he's like, I can get this done. I'm playing with my son. And, yeah. and that's dad like, yo, come on, do it, son. It didn't matter about the money because he didn't right. take NIL money like that. Like, he made, like, $5 million. Or he could have other stuff. He didn't do it because I already got money. Like, I'm living at home. Like, my dad's a billionaire. I don't need yeah. the money. So Shador making that money, he'd be like, look, at least he could threaten it. Yeah. You know I mean, like I said, like, I don't know how the Mannings did it, but they pulled that off. Like, on game day, on, I mean, on L- LA too. I mean, it's happened LA. before. Yeah, it can be done. So I, I, I'm just saying that's my prediction. I, yeah, I know okay. Okay. Work. We don't know. Uh, I don't know if Shador is going to be the top pick where he's going to be making demands where the hell he's going. That's what well, people project him like a lot of being up there, right? I mean, I don't know how that works, but yeah, they had Bronny projected as a lottery pick for a while too. And I mean, I guess it's just because it's it's his son, right? So like, well, why and, wouldn't you? And Bron, see, Bron- the Bronny thing is an anomaly because. Once he had that heart attack thing, everything, really everything's yeah. down. For sure. Like it's like, oh, he didn't. I was like, dude, they weren't pressing him hard in college. He wasn't playing. He played what 10, 15 minutes. Like, oh, he scored five points. Okay, because he's not playing. He's not going hard. Right. His whole dream and goal is to get to the league. So I'm not risking injury or whatever out here for y'all. Whatever. Yeah. So that's different. But Shadur, he's at least going in the first round. Yeah. So we we quarterback classes. Yeah. We we quarterback class. Um, yeah, I don't know. And that's money, like you said, it's money for yeah. sure. Jersey the, sells easily. Is getting, is getting a huge boost. A he, huge he him to the him to the. I mean, not to the. I don't know if the Raiders would want him, but that would be kind of crazy if Shador got to the Raiders. Because I mean, just in general, Vegas is like that's where the money's going right now. Well, again, my my point of even saying that. Nah, it's a good, interesting. I think that might happen. I'm being right is just because of what <laughs> what Dion said. Yeah, yeah. Down was very adamant. I'm like, yo, he he is serious about that. Like, he, and he yeah. said that last year before he even took the Colorado job. He was just talking about it. Um, it's giving uh, it's giving Lavar Ball vibes a little bit. It's giving Lavar Ball. Hey, hey, Lavar got two of his sons. It happened. I'm just saying, it's yeah. giving Levar, it's giving the Lakers yeah, thing. Give his sons in, in the league. That's one thing I hate when he uh, yeah, two, I, he got two. He got two. He got two point one sons in the league. I don't I, know about he three. Got, <laughs> he, he was only in there for a week, but he got to leave. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, he was only in there for a week, but he's in yeah, there. Right, right, he, right. His other son with some badass shoes that messed up his knees for life. Hey, 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 oh, look, my you know oh my he god! Oh my god! He got his kids to leave. He got you know his. Know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not gonna let y'all slander this man. He's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Leah, go get the lead. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, so man. um yeah, uh th- like I said, next week we're gonna be doing uh we'll do the r- power rankings and uh <sighs> conference champions. We'll do all the fun stuff with the NFL when the preseason is pretty much over next week. Get us ready for uh the season. The Phillies lost to the Braves three to one. Three to one. Um you know what I noticed about summertime when it's slow. 
they always talk about the rivals. Who's the biggest rival? Mm-hmm. What's a bigger rival? Sixers, Celtics, Phillies, Braves, Eagles, Cowboys. Which one out of those three do you think is the biggest one? Eagles, Cowboys. I mean, Eagles, Cowboys. Yeah, it's got to be Eagles, Cowboys. I mean, like, in, terms of, in terms of like competitiveness, it feels uh, like it's been more than the Phillies. Go, go away and come back. We Harry just, and we just hit Mike. the hour mark. It's the other rivalry. Yep, yeah. Harry's <laughs> Mike. We just hit the hour mark. There it goes. Play. Yeah, no, Eagles, Cowboys is the biggest one by far. Um, I believe so, too, just because football is the bigger sport. Right, that's the only reason why. Um, I will say that the last two years, Phillies Braves has been off the charts because of the postseason. Yeah, because we win. Because we win. Not, only, not only because we win, yeah, just no, because fun. They, they, they talk a lot of trash. The Braves talk a lot of trash. So yeah. in the postseason coming up, like they, they've been talking trash all year, and they're down. They still talk of trash. So... Um. Yeah, but it, it's definitely the the Eagles and the and the Cowboys. Also, because we split fifty fifty all the time with them. The Celtics, we've been down bad to the Celtics lately. They've had our number. Uh, maybe with um Benny Wallace, we'll be able to overcome. <laughs> um, we I was touching the Sixers real quick before we got out of here tonight. Yeah. Um, Sixers have a full roster. Mm-hmm. Eric, you you ready to put the pom poms back on? I mean, I will say, you know, we talked about with PG, right? It's like we we asked each other, like, all right, how do you feel about that, right? How what, what grade do you give Maury for PG? And it was kind of like, you know, Jason's take. I remember being like, he did as good. He did the thing he was gonna do, right? That was the only option. Like he did the best thing he could do, but that's the only option. I feel like starting to feel like Maury's being creative and like, you know, taking some taking some other plays, um, picking up this guy, the French guy, Benye Wallace. I mean. That could be that could be great. That could be awesome. So I like the way he's kind of looking for players. Um, yeah, I got the pom poms on for sure. Keep Embiid healthy and let's get to the playoffs. I'm ready. Jason, are you clapping your hands? Vibes are good right now. It's a good vibe to seem like the Phillies, right? Everybody's happy. <clears throat> We're all excited about you know October for preseason basketball to start or something like that. But, uh, <laughs> but no, yeah, I like the I like the moves they did to round out the bench. The, the team should be solid, but it all matters. It's a shame the Sixers have now become a team like I don't care until the playoff results, and that just sucks to watch that way. Are the Philadelphia 76ers getting to the Eastern Conference Finals this year? Don't say anything about injuries. Just say, are they getting to the Eastern Conference Finals this year? No. Yes. <sighs> <laughs> I'm going to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to say yes. There you go. I'm going to say yes for one reason. If they don't, yep. th- this is how bad it's been for me. If they don't do it this year, mm-hmm. they're never going to make it to a finals. With this roster. Well, this roster is, yes. Yeah, like not never again. Ever. Yeah, yeah, but- not ever again. Never. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Uh, the Embiid. Era yeah. is never going to make it to a finals. Correct. Because PG's going to get a year older. B's going to get a year older. Presumably more injury prone. And the other pieces are ancillary and you're going to have to move them around again. And I don't want to hear, well, we don't have the congruity and the things we're going to learn each other. You're not making trades at the deadline this year. You're not switching the team. This is going to be the same all year long. I watched the Celtics go, bring in Porzingis, move away from Smart. Move, they moved yeah. a lot of pieces around. Yep. Brought in Holiday, made it work. And I'm not. And I'm not trying to say go win a championship. I'm saying get to the Eastern Conference Finals. If you don't, if they don't do it this year, I don't think Embiid's ever going to be able to do it in his tenure. I just don't. So it's it's Nick Nurse here too. Also, I mean that's a big that's a big deal to me. I think he wasn't as good as I thought he was going to be last year. So I'm excited to see him like get get that fire and he knows the deal too nurse is a smart guy he knows what the pressure that's on this team like an Embiid, so he's well, gonna take I, that seriously the thing i want to say about nurse last year was he didn't have the horses to yeah. make the adjustments but i don't know how much power he had in the trade line for the horses like we could have used a morris brother in the playoffs right we we could we could have used like the whole PJ Tucker dog thing that actually is a, not an old dog, just a middle aged dog. Right. Except not PJ Tucker. Someone yeah, yeah can... literally anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that's that's another quotable that I love so much. I'm like he's like Omar from the Wire, and like he's but he don't pull the shotgun out. He just <laughs> Omar coming, Omar coming. <laughs> Everybody's scared to death, but like he just stand on the corner, shoot. 
Yeah. You got to shoot. Yes, so yeah. to keep the fear going, PJ. Oh, my God. He just, you know, he's like, have I shown you my shoe collection? Hey, look, look, it is dope. If he's he, like 40 if, years old, too. I mean, Jesus. If he shot the way he barked in people's faces. <laughs> we would have had something. But, oh, uh, my God. Yeah, we, we, needed a, we needed a Morris. And uh, I don't know how much Nick Nurse had to do with the roster because with the roster, the rotation was bring in Lowry. Yeah. Just wonder and have him jump all over the floor, which he's like Pat Beverly. Like, you hate watching him play basketball unless he's on your team. Right. It's no, still, still kind of him. annoying. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't awesome. <laughs> Fair annoying. Like, oh, at least at least somebody's diving for the ball. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. <laughs> but, I mean, somebody's like, talking. Somebody's diving for it. Like, you know, right. like, hmm, we're in a timeout right now. Let go. Oh my god. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be high vibes on the sixes. I'm gonna try and be positive. I'm gonna woo 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 woo. Uh, when Joel puts up, you know, 65 points or whatever, like I, w- I was last year, I was happy. It was great until I was happy got putting up points last year, and then you know the inevitable happens because yep. they let the league bully them. You know, take the fine, take the fine. Yeah, do, do my strategy. Only play home games and any game that's not a back to back. If you want to play away, sure, it can't be a back to back night. That's that's his away game. So he plays, you know, 50% of the games. And they'll be like, oh, we're going to find you for doing that. Dude, he plays 50% of the games every year, every year. You should find <laughs> me for the last five years. <laughs> so better to do oh this. My God. And people get to sometimes see him beat throughout the whole season than not see him at all. Yeah. Um. So that's it. We're going to cut it short tonight. Well, not short. We did an hour. We did our job. We got things that's done. Right. Um. Anything fun going on in your world, Harry? Pickleball and uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, Harry's out here pickleballing. Yeah. y'all. If you're in Philly, you want a pickleball? Hit me up. Harry's too young to be pickleball, and I told him now um, about these young folks coming in stealing pickleball. See, the, the gentrification of pickleball. I play that's, with all the old heads. What do you mean? That's what I'm saying. See, you mean? And they love it. They love it. Yeah, here, yeah, because he got he got his shirt off out here. I'm like to, I'm like Superman. Stuff. I'm pulling the punches. I'm pulling oh, my punches. Lord. I'm not killing anybody. There's no reason Kate watches the show because she, she mad Harry got on a t-shirt. <laughs> I know what's going on. You out there pickleball, <laughs> trying to get these old women a heart attack. You know what I mean? <laughs> Stay your ass in the house, my boy. I don't like that. I don't like none of that. Uh, oh, yeah. Jason, you took the kids to the baseball game. That was fun. Yeah. You got to sit in the suite. Yeah. Ball was awesome. out of control. The, yeah. the, the, the Donated were, tickets. <laughs> yeah, the, the Phillies were negative like nine <laughs> at your game, though. Yeah, the most boring game of the season, you know. Sugar <laughs> grandmama. He apologized to me because the game was boring as if it was her fault. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Exactly. So, see, you know. See Harry, getting, <laughs> Harry out here got sugar mama on out. You know what I mean? Economy's yeah. looking rough. You know what I'm saying? Pick All a ball. Right. That's the... Look, look, look. Wait till I wait till I drop my OnlyFans video tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I <laughs> yesterday. You think I'm joking? I got I got a video ready to go. I mean, I pulled, oh. I pulled a picture. I mean, myself right now. I might even show you a little something. Oh, don't let me fool you, boy. I'm out here in these streets. I got the. I'm not. Hey, look. Would you edit just, that pole vaulters Photoshop? Uh, hey, look, <laughs> hey, look, look. I make it do what it do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's um. It's funny because I was talking to Harry about the pickleball thing because I read an article like, oh, all the young people are the the, the, the young people that suck at tennis are yeah. taking them off the pickleball <laughs> courts and the older people can't play pickleball and they can't play tennis anymore because that's why they started pickleball. And I'm like, oh my God. Harry, you're part of the problem. Harry's like, I'm, <laughs> I'm playing with the old folks too. I'm like, that's not that's not helping the old folks. Yeah, you're talking about right. they can't get their own thing back. They're like, look, see, see what he did? <laughs> Harry's out there networking. That's yeah, all he's exactly, doing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's they all I need some exercise. Too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's funny. Uh, I have been uh, doing nothing much. Uh, I am going to be doing another show soon. Um, still doing the show, and still probably going to keep the show going on Tuesday nights at the same time because during football season, that's a good night. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll talk about all that stuff next week going forward and how things are going to go and play out and how the world's going to work, especially with the weather being nice like this. I love it so much. It's yeah, so it's beautiful. It's super nice. Like, I, I don't mind hot days either, but I, I don't like right. 103 days. Like, I, I you know, if you, the whole control the weather thing, like if I had San Diego weather, it was like oh, so, yeah. five yeah. with a breeze all the time, I'd yeah. be happy. You know what I mean? And, and give me this like 71, 72 at night, I'd be good. Yep. I was like calm today. I don't know what it was, just like a chill, calm weather Yo. day. 
it was right mad emotion. peaceful like, today. Yeah, mad peaceful. You know what I mean, I'm I'm rolling the window down, cruising. I was yeah. like, wow, you breathing in the air. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, the oxygen. The Ooh. oxygen. But and and Jay, like Jason said, he's like, oh, the windows open. Like, you, you live in an apartment, so yeah, I know what it's like when you're like, oh, central air kind of works really good in an apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah it should be working. <laughs> like, you know what I mean, not for nothing. It's nice to seal that bad boy up and just let it roll. Um, yeah, I'm a fall girl. I'm just I'm not, no, I'm not no <laughs> bit. Nah, hey, I'm not no, not no pumpkin spice bit. I'm an apple cider hoe, you know. Ooh, what I mean? Okay, uh, yeah, I like them apples, okay. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it today is like, man, I was like, should I turn the air on? That was the other thing, too. I didn't go out of the house till late, so I yeah, was about same. to turn the air on and I walked outside. Like, oh, snap, the air's on, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> the air is on, so it was oh good. my god. Uh, so uh, shout out to everybody. Uh, like, share, subscribe, make yourself useful. Apple supremacy rules for sure. Kate, 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 Kate. And uh, I'll make sure that Harry puts on a tank top for you next week. <laughs> uh, out.